Today we are going to go over section 8.2 on unit conversions. We already talked about problem number one uh, in which we tried to figure out um, how many seconds Katherine Johnson lived. Uh, she lived to be 101 years old and um, there are a lot of different approaches to figuring this out. Our goal for our section 8.2 is to standardize this approach a bit so that uh, we can keep track of all of the units um, and feel confident in our answers. So the first part of this section on page 57 just gives us a chance to become familiar with the unit conversion handout that is in the front of your packet. Um, it is a purple handout this time, I believe. Um, I try to keep the same color, but I change it, unfortunately. Um, so if you look at that handout, you will be able to just sort of do a scavenger hunt um, to familiarize yourself. And I recommend doing that on your own and then coming back and, and making sure um, it matches the answers I'm about to give. I would pause the video and try to fill out these six spots just to become familiar with that unit conversion table. <clears throat> so hopefully you found these on your own. One mile is uh, 5,280 feet. One pound is the same as 16 ounces. 1,000 meters is the same as a single kilometer. Notice that in that first row of conversions, we are either within the metric system um, or we are within the system that we use in <laughs> America. And then in the second row, we are going back and forth between the system we use in America and the metric system. So you're going to see that these numbers are a little bit more complicated. One mile is the same as 1.609 kilometers. One kilogram is the same as 2.205 pounds. This abbreviation is a little bit strange, but it stands for pounds. And one gallon is the same as 3.785 liters. And these are approximations. Sometimes <coughs> you might see that a kilogram is listed as 2.2 pounds. Um, they are not an exact, they, these numbers are difficult decimals. So when you're doing the web work, please be sure to use the conversions that are given on the handout in your packet, or you will not necessarily have the answers rounded the way web work wants. We're going to agree to use the <coughs> conversions with the number of decimal places on that handout to make our answers consistent. In letter C, there's just um, a little exploration of um, the underlying um, concept in unit conversions, which is that if we have a uh, number on the top of a fraction and on the bottom of a fraction, we can divide it out because for instance, four divided by four is equal to one. So <laughs> we're gonna use this same concept when we are doing um, unit conversions. Um, in the second example, sometimes the number isn't a fraction. If we want, we can put it over one to make it um, easier to keep track of, although that's not required. Um, a number that isn't a fraction is the same as a numerator. So three divided by three is one. And sometimes we break down a number 25 is equal to 5 times 5, and that allows us to cancel out one of those 5s. And so this is something that we have hopefully practiced while we deal with fractions. It's generalized in this diagram of shapes. If you have something on the top that is the same as the thing on the bottom, it doesn't have to be a number. It could be anything like a circle. Um, it is going to equal 1 and cancel out. Um, anything on the top that is the same on the bottom can be canceled out. So in this example, 
um, everything cancels out except for our nice hexagon. And so the answer is just the hexagon. And this is, um, we're going to use this, um, for instance, in the, with the Katherine Johnson conversion problem, we all use the fact that there are 24 hours in a day. And um, 24 hours is the same thing as a day. So even though these two numbers look different, it is actually like having a square over a square. These are equal to one because the top and the bottom value represent the same amount of time. Um, they represent the same um, quantity and um, we call these unit fractions um, or conversion fractions. We're going to use them to convert. All right, and then in the bottom part, it's just asking us to think about like what makes sense um, when we're measuring things to get um, to, to remind ourselves what we know about um, different units of measurement. So, for instance, if you were measuring the length of a city block, you might use meters if you were in the metric system or yards <clears throat> or maybe feet. It wouldn't make sense to use inches to measure a city block because you would have too many of them. It'd be an awkward number. Um, the water in a bathtub, you might use gallons, or if you were in the metric system, you might use liters. If you're measuring the length of a mouse, you might do that with inches or centimeters. Or if it was a little baby mouse, I guess you could use millimeters. <laughs> But millimeters is probably more appropriate for the thickness of a marker tip. If you're in the American system, you'd have to use inches and you'd have something like um, the uh, a um, 32nd of an inch or something. It's a little bit awkward in the, in the American system because we don't have a really small measurement for um, <clears throat> length. For the volume of a coffee mug, you might use fluid ounces, for instance. And the weight of a mouse, um, ounces or grams. So that's just to sort of think about where these, what, how these measurements connect to real life. <clears throat> All right, so let's go back and look at that example one that we um, did together in our groups and think about a way that we can organize the conversion that you did. <clears throat> um, so there is a systematic way to convert between different types of measurements. And um, what we do is use unit ratios. A unit ratio is a fraction where the numerator and the denominator are equivalent amounts for different units. For every relationship between units, there are two possible unit fractions. So for instance, um, 60 minutes is the same as an hour. Or I could flip that unit fraction over and call it one hour is the same as 60 minutes. And depending on the situation, I, I'll want to use um, one choice or the other choice. Um, there are 5,280 feet in a mile. Or I could think of that as one mile is the same as 5,280 feet. So let's just see how this is going to work. Um, so we um, will, uh, some people said that Katherine Johnson was 101 years old. Some people rounded up to 102 years. Um, and um, if they were, we, we could get down to the exact um, day. Um, oh, because we could get back to the exact days, seconds, but we're just going to um, round, let's just call it 102 years. We'll give her, she was in her 102nd year. <clears throat> um, and we want to convert that into seconds. How old was she in seconds? So um, some people change to weeks and then days, and some people change to months and then days. But those are actually a little awkward in our calendar system because they don't convert perfectly. Um, there are different numbers of <clears throat> months. Uh, days in each month. And the smoother way to do it is to remember that there are 365 days <coughs> in one year. 
And um, as someone pointed out, that doesn't account for leap year, but we're going to let that detail go for now. So I put the days on top and the years on the bottom, <laughs> because if I turn this first fraction, I mean number into a fraction, the years are actually in the numerator. And I need the two units, years, to cancel out. Notice I'm only crossing out the units. I'm not crossing out the number. The 102 doesn't cancel out with anything. It is just the unit itself that cancels out. Similarly to how a circle would cancel out with a circle because they are the same. <clears throat> All right. So now I have converted into days. I want to, I'm trying to get to seconds. So I'm going to change days into hours. I'm trying to get rid of the days. So I'm going to put the day <coughs> unit on the bottom. And I know that days and hours are connected. One day is equal to 24 hours. So now I have changed my days into hours. I am going to next change my hours into minutes by noting, um, well, I'm going to, to get rid of the hours. So that goes on the bottom and I'm changing into minutes and there are 60 minutes in an hour. I have to be sure that I put the 60 next to the minutes or I won't have a true situation. There aren't 60 hours in a minute, there are 60 minutes in an hour. So I just need to always make sure that my unit fractions are accurate. Um, and then I can cross off the hours and I am almost there, I'm at minutes. I have to change into seconds. I know that there are 60 seconds in one minute. And that works out well for me because the minutes are on the bottom and the top, so they will cancel out. And so now I have a string of numbers I can multiply together. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to multiply 102 times 365 times 24 times 60 times 60. And that is similar to the, to the <laughs> type of calculations that you all did together. Um, but I have written it out in such a fashion that I can be sure I haven't missed any steps. I can go back and trace and see my units changing from years to days and then from days to hours and then from hours to minutes. And the one that I have left is seconds. That's good because that's what I was going to try to do. Now remember that if we are asked a question, we should answer it with a sentence. Um, Catherine Johnson was th about 3,000, oh, sorry, um, 3 trillion, 216 million, 672,000 seconds old. <clears throat> it's interesting to think about all the little seconds of our life that we get to live. Okay, so let's try this again with shorter examples. Um, we're gonna use unit ratios to carry out all conversions. Please note that direction in order to get full credit on the problem set and the quiz and the final, you will have to actually show those unit conversions. Um, sometimes we can think it through with logic, but what we're practicing is a more systematic method so that when we aren't familiar with the measurements, we will still have a way to convert because we can't expect our brains to always be familiar with the measurements. With our example with Katherine Johnson, we're so familiar with time that we're able to kind of logically think it through. But there are a lot of measurements in the world and it's just not realistic to think that we will be familiar enough with all the measurements to be able to use logic. And so instead we're gonna use this uh, unit conversion system. It says, remember to include all units during each step and round to the nearest hundredth, which means two decimal places. So convert five gallons to liters. So um, I'm starting off with five gallons. I need to get to liters. If I look at my um, unit conversion sheet, I will see that um, one gallon is equal to 3.785 liters. So I have two options that I can consider for this conversion. <clears throat> I'm either going to have the gallons on the top 
or the gallons on the bottom. One thing that can be helpful is just to write down this information that we've read off of our conversion sheet. We don't have to memorize these, but we have to be able to find them. So I know that a gallon is equal to 3.785 liters. Well, I wanna get rid of the gallons. So I'm going to put the gallon unit on the bottom and the liter unit on the top. 3.785 goes with the liters. So that has to go on the top and one goes with the gallons. And if you want, which most a lot of people do, you can change that into a fraction too, just so that it looks like two fractions with a clear top and bottom. The gallons are gonna cancel out. That means I'm left with liters, which is what I wanted. So to get my answer, I do five times 3.785, and I'll get that it's equal to approximately 18.93 liters. <clears throat> okay, um, this next one says to convert five cubic inches. That's a measure of volume. It's a little bit of an interesting one um, in our metric system to gallons. If you look on the um, conversion sheet, you will see um, that one gallon is equal to 231 inches. And let's just go back and look at that conversion sheet, try to find that conversion. It takes a little, you have to, every time you go through this search of um, trying to find these conversions, it'll help you um, get more familiar. So we're in the volume unit conversions because gallons and cubic unit cubic inches measures volume. This picture is supposed to tell us that we're doing volume. Notice that this one is area and it has a little symbol here to show you area. This one is length. So that's supposed to help us sort of navigate this. And right here we have one gallon is equal to 231 cubic inches. So it's a little bit of a treasure hunt. The more you do it, um, the more familiar you'll get with this. The first column is the US American system. The second column is the metric system. And the third column is going back and forth between the systems. And that's um, consistent throughout this chart. Um, this, the fourth table is um, weight. And then the last one, um, we've got time and then also computer storage for our modern world. Okay, so. That's my conversion. Um, cubic inches is on the top. I need to get rid of cubic inches. And so I'm going to put the cubic inches unit on the bottom so they will cancel, which means gallons goes on the top. And the number one goes with gallons and 231 goes with cubic inches. <clears throat> if I want, I can change this one into a fraction and I can see now that the cubic inches cancel out. And now because um, this is the first time this has happened, but we have a number on the top and a number on the bottom, well, the fraction bar means division. So I'm going to do five divided by 231 to get my answer. And five divided by 231, if I round to two decimal places, I get about 0 0.2 gallons. All right, in example three, we're going to think about how this conversions work if we are working in <laughs> um, area or volume. Um, it says how many square inches are in a square foot, how many cubic inches are in a cubic foot. So imagine that this square is one foot by one foot. If that is the case, another way I could say that is that it's 12 inches by 12 inches because there are 12 inches in a foot. And if I'm a little bit careful here, I can go back and actually divide this square into 12 units that way. And also 12 units the other way, just to give us a visual of how, why this conversion works the way it does. And if I went back and counted, each of these squares, there's gonna be 12 in each row and there's 12 rows of them. So there's 144 of these little square inches. <laughs> well, let's see how we would do that conversion um, without a picture. So I have one square foot. 
Well, if I write that in a mathematical way, I'm going to call that one square foot with an exponent. And this square means I have the unit foot times another foot. The one isn't squared, just the unit. I'm talking about a square that is one foot by one foot. So I could write that out instead of writing one foot squared. I'm just going to make sure I remember the conversion properly by writing one foot times one foot. I'm going into inches and I know that there are 12 inches in a foot. However, if I only do the conversion once, I can only cross off one of those units. So I actually need to do the conversion a second time, which makes sense because I'm converting two dimensions. So I'm going to do a conversion twice. And now you'll see I have inches times inches, which is square inches, that's good. And 12, one times 12 times 12 is 144. My unit is inches squared. So one square foot is equal to 144 square inches. So it follows that if I'm going to do volume, this thing right here, this picture right here, is one cubic foot. Well, I could also write that one cubic foot like that. And that foot to the third power means feet times feet times feet. So how many times am I going to need to do my conversion? Three. In order to help remember that, I'm always going to, I really recommend writing out this um, exponent with the, so you can see all three units, feet times feet times feet. And so it isn't enough just to do the conversion once. If I write it out that way, that's easier for me to see because I can cancel out just one of those units with that com unit conversion. I need to do it again and again if I want to cancel out the second foot and also the third foot, and also if I want to end up with cubic inches, inches times inches times inches is inches cubed. And 12 times 12 times 12 is 1,728. So a cubic foot is 1,728 cubic inches. All right, so that leads us to the group work and I'm not gonna go through the group work in the video, um, but um, there is um, a um, answer key and um, that you can refer to um, in the, the PDF of the answer key. So what um, I recommend you do is try to do these conversions um, for the group work problems. And then when you are finished, please refer to the answer key to see if not only your answer, but also your process matches my process. Remember that um, the direction here says, use unit ratios to carry out all the conversions. Remember to include all units during each step. So we're going to want to see, um, and I'm just gonna sort of set up the structure here um, we're going to want to see, in this case, two fractions multiplied by each other. We start with the 100 miles, and we can just put that over one. And then we need to think about the conversion. Um, sometimes we need to have more than one conversion to get to our final answer. This one is starting with 100 miles but we can't go straight to miles from miles to meters. When we look on our conversion sheet, we have to go someplace in between. And there's actually more than one way to solve that puzzle. I'll let you think about that one. Um, and um, sometimes we have other little issues like Ross is five feet, seven inches. How many meters tall is he? Well, first I need to think about my five feet seven inches is an awkward measurement. It's two different units at the same time. So I wanna convert that to inches only. And once I convert it to inches only, then I can try to change those inches into meters. Um, 
And so um, there's just sort of uh, that that's going to be true in letter D as well. Um, all right, so give those a try um, and then go back and whoops, um, look at the answer key and see um, what you think.